So we finally get to talk about Kagetsu. Welcome to my basic Kagetsu guide. In this guide, you can see that I haven't deployed him on this particular playthrough. I actually tend to not run Kagetsu because I know how strong he is. I have used him on, I think, my second Maddening run. Uh, but I used him on one of my runs, and he's insane. His, his growths are great. His bases are absolutely ridiculous. And even on Swordmaster, he can pop off. He can basically pop off on any class. Uh, so the main reason I don't tend to run him in my runs is I already know he's really good and I have to test out other things, but I still understand how he works and how to build him because the fundamentals are the same between building units, so I can just apply them here. Okay, so let's talk about his growths. So Kagetsu has 50, or I'm sorry, 60% HP growth, 30% strength, 15% magic, 50% dex, 50% speed, 40% defense, 25% uh, res, 40% luck, and 10% build. These are arguably some of the best growths in the entire game. He has pretty decent health. He has like average strength, which is fine because he has high speed, high dex, which means more accuracy and crits. Uh, he has high defense, which means tanking on enemy phase. He has like pretty pretty like average above average res really good luck growth which is crit avoid and he also has 10 build um so he starts like right out of the gate he's very strong just on bases like base growths alone but then like his base stats uh his base stats are crazy um if we go to reclass him you'll see how high his build is but his build is quite high for a fast unit which allows him to wield heavy weapons and combined with his high speed and high dex, you have one of the best combat units in the game effortlessly. He also joins on an advanced class, so all you have to do is second seal him. And also he has 1000 SP, so he can immediately get 1000 SP abilities for zero investment. He arguably is one of the best uh, units the game hands you, if not the best. Uh, well, maybe, maybe Dancer's a little bit better, but... He's definitely one of the best combat units in the game, effortlessly, and you can put him on any class and he will excel. So pros and cons, or I'm sorry, let's go over the passive and then we'll go into pros and cons. Blinding Flash is his passive. If he initiates combat, inflicts a void minus 10 on foe. So it's not enough for him to have high dex and high dex growth. He also wants to increase his, his hit by 10. So his passive is phenomenal. It just makes him more accurate. That's objectively like amazing. There's literally zero doubt. There's no downside to this at all. This this is pure upside, if you will. All right, so let's talk about pros and cons of the unit. Uh, pros, you get him early mid game. You get him with crazy stats, 1K SP, insane growths, uh, objectively one of the best units in the game. Cons, you don't get him early enough. <laughs> That's, that's the only con you don't get him earlier but you don't need him earlier because like the early chapters aren't that bad uh, but that's literally the only con i can think of he has as far as i can tell he has no downsides at all he's the only con maybe he's he's not the best on magic classes but you could you could actually throw him on sage and he would be good on it funny enough because of his high build his high speed his high dex and sage's 30 percent magic growth he actually in his 15 percent putting him at 45 percent magic growth he could be an okay sage, funny enough, but he's probably just not good on magic, but that's fine. He, he doesn't need it. All right, so level of investment, I would say is low, basically non-existent. You can keep him on Swordmaster or you can reclass him. It's very low, basically one of the lowest investment units for the highest um, output. Uh, so let's talk about classes. So let's change his class. Yeah, I don't, I don't run him because I know how overpowered he is. And I have run him before, and he is very overpowered. Um, I usually have to test things on my runs, so I have to like test builds out or try different characters out. So there's no reason for me to run him on my build or on my my playthroughs because I already know how strong he is. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't run him if you want to beat the game easier. He's definitely one of the units that does this. All right, so for classes, he's pretty much good on anything physical. There are certain things he'll be better at than others. On Swordmaster, he can run a crit build and he'll be fine. His his strength is good enough that crits on him are actually quite high impact, and his build is high enough that he could potentially consistently double while also critting. Um, so his build and his speed and his dex all work together to scale his crits and his speed and his doubling. 
So he could be fine just on Swordmaster, just with a crit build. Uh, not he could be. He will be fine. <laughs> you just have to make sure you build the the weapons and grave, you know, engrave a thing with a crit engraving, and just have him run in and one round things. Uh, but hero, I don't necessarily recommend it. There's no downside to him being on hero. He just gets brave assist and can consistently double things. Uh, like look at look at his stats on hero. He gets two points of strength. He gets an extra point of build. He could legit just run up to most things and just like one round them on this class with like a spear, like a spear or a sword. Uh, axes are a little bit heavy, but I would say like sil like steel and silver lance, he could probably one round a lot of things on on hero. Uh, he doesn't have access to silver on hero though. He just acts, he would just be able to use a steel lance. So maybe hero isn't his best option for that, but on swords on hero, he'd be pretty legit. It increases his base damage. You could also run crit, crit sword hero. There's no reason why you shouldn't. I mean, his dex is crazy. His stats are nuts. He's very accurate, so you could run Crit Sword on Swordmaster or Hero. Uh, Hero would be good for chain attack spam. Uh, Halberdier, I would say, is probably a waste for him. His speed is so good that he shouldn't have doubling issues, and that's really what Halberdier units want. Like, Halberdier wants high strength, bad speed to try to fix it with the pincer attack. So you could, it would be fine on him, it's just that it's not taking advantage of all of his strengths. Royal Knight, he could go on this if you want. I don't see why you'd want him on this. He should be focusing on killing things. He shouldn't be using staves ever, in my opinion. He should just be killing everything. Uh, Berserker would only really be useful for increasing strength growth for a few level ups and switching him off. The dex cap is so, like super low. His high dex growth means he'll hit the cap very fast. Uh, Warrior would be fine for him. It increases his base strength by quite a bit. He does lose some speed going into Warrior. He does gain build, which kind of helps offset it. Um, I think there's better options for him, but this would be fine. Sniper, he could be okay on. This would be a killer bow type of situation. You would want to run like a crit build. This would help him consistently land more crits because of the crit plus 10. Now, obviously, if something can counterattack at two range, then it's not as reliable for getting the crit plus 10. But you could run crit bow on this. Same thing with bow knight, you could run crit bow on this. He doesn't need the hit plus 40, it basically is useless to him. He's so accurate that it doesn't matter. Uh, armor, I would not put him on armor, you're wasting his potential. Funny thing though, he is pretty fast. He's still fast enough on armor that with speed fixing, he, he might still be able to double on like great knight, which is crazy because that's not, like no, very few units can do that. He could potentially be like some weird great knight build because he does still have 40 defense growth, so like 40% defense growth. So he could run Great Knight, and with his 50% speed, he potentially could see doubling on something like Lin or Speed Taker, like even just unlocking Speed Taker. So funny enough, he could be this weird bruiser off tank that still hits hard and still doubles like low speed enemies or medium speed enemies and tanks, but I don't think that's a good use case for him. Uh, Paladin. He could run Paladin. It would be decent. Um, I don't think it's his best option, but it's a solid option. He could run it. Uh, the, 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 the both, or the, the both, the growths on it are kind of like medium across the board. So Paladin is not bad. It gives you, I believe, 15% strength and speed growth. Let's see if my memory serves. Yeah, 15% strength, speed, HP. Uh, defense, res. So Paladin would be a good bruiser option for him if you want to have him be, like dive in and, and fight things and not have to worry about flying weakness because we're, we're going to get to that. But Paladin would be a solid option for him. Wolf Knight? Wolf Knight I don't think is the best because of its strength growth. It only gives plus 5% strength growth, which is kind of on the lower side. It does give him plus 20% speed. Uh, but I feel like he, he wants heavier weapons because of, he has build, so you, sh you might as well run like swords or lances versus daggers. Daggers can be good, so he could be a, a decent wolf knight. Uh, maybe like a lance dagger wolf knight. A sword dagger wolf knight, the damage on swords is similar. To, like if you get a silver dagger upgraded to like plus three, it's like similar to a steel sword or a, a silver sword upgraded. So you might as well go for the lances if you're going for higher damage. But the build is kind of lower on Wolf Knight. The speed is great, but the, the raw strength values, in my opinion, aren't the best for him. He could still be a good Wolf Knight, though. 
It's just that you'd want to have the option to use a lance, maybe a sword to hit some key targets, like sword for like Levin Sword or Armor Slayer, um, lance for like Rider's Bane. I think that would be the idea because daggers suffer against enemy wolf knights because of the speed disparity because they're fat they're as fast as you so you don't double them so rider's bane targets that and then daggers also suffer against armor they tend to be notoriously bad at dealing damage to armor so armor slayer helps them hit through that uh, also there's no crit builds like consistent crit daggers as far as i know that allow you know crit build which is one of the things he's really good at uh, Griffin Knight, I think, is actually one of the better options. I think this is just better than Wolf Knight. Um, you could run it on swords. That would be fine. You could also run it on lances. I think these are the better options for him. You get a strength increase off of Swordmaster. You also get like slightly higher bases on average. So you can see he goes up 10 rating. He gets more luck, res, dex, magic, and strength. He does get a little bit more health, and of course it's flying. He does get access to staves. So on Griffin Knight, his growths would be 40% strength and magic would be 30%. Yeah, so he would be at 40% strength growth, but his speed would be at 70. So he'd be insanely fast and also his res and luck increase by 15%. So that would put him at 40% defense and res growth, 55% luck. And luck does increase avoid. As, if I recall correctly, it, it does a bunch of, it does random things in this game. It's not like how it is in three houses where it just increases crit and I think crit avoid. Um, in this game, I think it increases avoid. I think it increases hit too. It has some weird properties. It, it does increase crit avoid though. Uh, but Griffin Knight would allow him to be insanely fast while maintaining at least 40% strength growth and on fixed mode, that definitely matters. Uh, Wolf Knight, is similar except you'd be 35 percent strength growth but the other advantage of griffin is that you also get the magic growth so it puts him at 30 percent magic growth so if he wants to run like sword griffin knight he could reliably use 11 sword over time as he starts leveling up so if he levels up let's say 20 times he's plus six magic uh putting him at 13 magic that's decent enough to hit through some enemy armor for good damage alternatively you could just rely on his strength and just use armor slayer but it can be, but let's say if it's like an enemy wyvern, uh, those have high defense, low res, so that would allow him to target. So Griffin Knight gives him flexibility. I think his best class is probably wyvern, probably sword lance wyvern. This doubles down on the offense, so he would be 50% strength growth and 55% speed with his bases. I think this is his best class and you can run crit builds on it too. So you can run like a double build. You could probably go for a quad build if you want. I don't know that that's the best idea, but Wyvern does increase build growth by 5%. So over 20 level ups, you're looking at three increased build, which offsets weapon weight. Uh, otherwise you're looking at basically one point of build per 10 level ups on fixed mode. But I think his best class is very likely Wyvern. There's other things he can make good use of. Like I'd say Griffin Knight is like a close second and some other things like Paladin is probably similar. Like Paladin, Griffin Knight, Wyvern. I think these are really solid options for him. Wolf Knight is okay. Um, and then other options that I think are good. Swordmaster, I'm not so sure about. I mean, you can run the crit build and it's fine. Now, I'm not so sure that Swordmaster exclusively makes crit build better. I think that's something from like older games because it's passive doesn't help you crit. And the only thing that it could do is increase dex growth. So Swordmaster's dex growth is only 15%, right? Uh, the dex growth on Griffin Knight is also 15% and on Wyvern it's 10. So it's not even the case that Swordmaster will objectively make you a crit machine in this game. Griffin Knight could equally make you a crit machine. However, Griffin Knight versus Swordmaster, like right now he's on Swordmaster. If I put him on Griffin Knight, he gains strength, he gains a dex. He does lose one build, but if you're running uh, Killing Edge or Wadao, it shouldn't matter because it's not that heavy. So gaining dex means more crits, gaining strength means more damage. So arguably Griffin Knight would be better for crit builds and Wyvern would be much better. 
you are losing one point of dex, but you're retaining build and you're also increasing strength by three, which is, you know, if you crit, that's that's nine more points of damage. So you have to consider that that small difference, like honestly, I think Wyvern's just his best class. And also you factor in air raid. If you can trigger air raid, that also helps boost up speed, which also increases avoid. So even if you're just attacking something that you already double, if you can set up air raids just by attacking from out of bounds, you can increase your avoid, I think by 10. Like I think it's speed is, or avoid is speed times two, and there's some other things. But I believe that's like plus 10 avoid. It's either plus five or plus 10 avoid, which does matter because if you stack avoid while attacking, you're not getting hit or you're getting hit less often. So definitely very solid unit. All right, so for early passives for him, uh, he can't get Cantor right away. He has to wait until chapter 17 because you get him after Cantor is available. Um, essentially the things he has access to, I can go over them really quickly and just run over to the ring chamber here. The things he has access to are just middle game and onward things. And it's up to you how you want to spend his SP, but getting him speed on Lin is not a bad idea. I would say getting him speed plus three for 500 SP is not a bad investment. So let's go to inherit skills. It's all the way down here. Yeah, speed plus three, it's only 500 SP, it's pretty cheap. Uh, on Erica, I don't know that any of these would really be worth it. Um, I don't think any of these are worth it for him. On Ike, there's really nothing axe power. The only thing you would be getting on Ike is Wrath. So if you want to if you want to do a crit build, saving up for Wrath could be worthwhile to increase the likelihood of crits. You also have to keep his health a little bit lower in order for this to work. Another thing, Dex could be good on him because this does increase crit rate. So if you want like an early build, if you just want to scale his speed and dex, you can't go wrong doing that. Because if you're running a crit build, that basically does that. And it also helps with the speed, so he doubles. But arguably, there's better things that you should be saving for. Uh, Draconic Hex, I wouldn't do. And Byleth, Mentorship is always good. So you could just get like speed and then Mentorship. And then eventually get like Speed Taker on him, get Wrath, something like that. Or you could just get Mentorship and save up SP. Mentorship scales the rate at which you level, so it also scales the rate at which you gain SP. So by getting mentorship early, eventually it will start to profit. Like you have to hit 12 level ups before you basically, like 12 to 13 level ups before you get your SP back, because it costs 250. But it's it makes you level up faster, which means higher stats sooner, which also means more speed sooner. So indirectly, this is like one of the better skills I usually unlock it on all my units because it's just so cheap and so strong. But aside from that, I'd say like Speed Taker, Wrath. Um, some things are super late game that I don't even like hold out. Like holdout's good, but it's like super late. I think it's like after chapter 19, so like chapter 20. That's like the end game. You can you can hold out for holdout if you want. Um, yeah, it's fine. Like it's it's a good skill. Uh, but I think that's it for Kigetsu. For early, well, actually, I'm sorry, for equipment. So if he's running swords, so we can just look at some of my other sword units and stuff. Now, if he's running swords or lances, there's like basic things that you'd want to build. Uh, so Lapis right now, like this silver lance, this would be a good weapon for him on Wyvern. Uh, he would just stab things with this for huge damage. Uh, you could also run silver sword on him. Because of his build, he can actually reasonably wield some of the stuff without it really hurting him too bad uh, there's also things like steel sword this would be okay on him killing edge wadao these would be fine on him uh, worm slayer and armor slayer these are like conditional things that should be used when it makes sense to and for other lances uh, really just silver and steel lance maybe brave lance so all right so this one has crazy weight because of Ike, but I think the Brave Lance weight is like 14 or something. So he would be like minus five speed on it. So it's debatable as to how good that is. Um, you could quad on him. I don't really see the point though. I, th I think he just wants to go for big doubling or just for crits and both of those should be fine on him. Uh, but that's pretty much it for Kagetsu. He's a very straightforward unit. He requires almost no planning He's one of the best combat units in the game, effortlessly, and he also joins your team 
at a good point in time. That's pretty early, early enough to use him a lot. And one thing I would say to do is just try to be careful with not overfeeding him because something that happens with hard carries is that they just start stealing XP from your team and you just rely on them so much without realizing it that <laughs> your other units aren't leveling up. So that's like a thing to watch out for. But yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, overall, very solid unit. Pretty easy to use, pretty easy to set up. I'd say just throw them on Wyvern and call it a day. You can also run Paladin or Griffin and pretty much any physical class, he will be at least A tier on because of his growths. Potentially, like always, like he's definitely S tier on like Wyvern, Griffin, and Paladin. So yeah, thanks for checking this out. Make sure you like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment if you use him in any interesting way that's very effective on maddening mode. And yeah, peace.